Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again this week. As you know from last week, we've been hanging out with Tammy Jill Schultz, one of the first female Navy fighter pilots, but really well known around the world for being the woman that landed Southwest Flight 1380. Had to get that right. Southwest Flight 1380 and saved 148 lives in what is no doubt one of the most incredible miracles I've ever heard of. But it was really in hearing this woman speak at the uh, National Day of Prayer in Washington, D.C., where I found out that she was a woman of faith, a woman of God, and that most of the women on that flight were women of God. So that day was truly, truly, truly about something bigger that God is doing in the earth. And um, I just want to dive into the conversation because Tammy Jo's life is one that is fascinating because her life really affirms the providence of God and the sovereignty of God as he uses the circumstances in our life to bring us to that moment of preparation where when we meet something that might make us fearful, we realize that we not only have God that we can give it to, but we have a skill set that he's also crafted in us. So just in moving to this, um, if you want to know more also about Tammy Joe's story, you can pick up uh, Nerves of Steel. And there's a young reader's edition of that book as well, which is yes. right. I love that, Tammy Joe. So it's for young people who want to learn or have an interest in aviation as well. Absolutely. That's when I was turned on to aviation at the young reader stage. And, um, and it's currently getting translated into um, Norwegian, Swedish, Danish. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> awesome. Those are actually also, those, those countries are so encouraging of women and equality between men and women. It doesn't actually surprise me that they would, that they would translate it because I, there, it's one of the places in the world that I've worked. Um, I used to host a TV show that aired there actually in the, oh, all wow. of those Scandinavian countries. And so I really kind of got to know the culture a bit. And um, strong, wonderful women. Like I met so many like women who were really doing really cool things. Um, yeah. But I want to set the stage here. So you weren't scheduled for flight 1380 on the morning of April 17th, 2018. And um, you had just traded trips with your husband, I believe it, it was, to... Yes. So could you actually now set the stage for that day? Yes, um, I coach my my son in his throwing events and track. Well, I, I coach some of the other boys too, but there was a track meet that week. Our son is a senior in high school at the time, and Dean, being the amazing Renaissance man that he is, uh, he knew that I so wanted to be at that track meet, and his schedule was so that he would be able to go and I would not. So he didn't even ask me. He just said, I switched our trips so you can go to the track meet. And so I headed out a day earlier on his trip. So at Southwest, uh, we have great fluid scheduling uh, ability. So we switched trips because we're both captains, same seat, and um, headed out on this trip. I, I met Darren Elliser, my first officer, and flew with him the day before, the day of April 17th. Uh, I met Shanique Mallory, Rachel Fernheimer, and Catherine Sandoval at the airplane that, that day. So we were all pretty new to each other. Wow. That, so, so you, I'm just sitting here, I mean, thinking about what God was doing in that, you know, <laughs> do you often, do you ever wonder? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it was it was interesting. There's my husband's take on it um, is he just said, you know, Tammy Joe, I think God needed a woman to fly that airplane that day. Wow. And his his buddies will will tease him and go, Well, Dean, could you have done what Tammy Joe did? He goes, If I couldn't, it'd be her fault. She was one of my instructors in the Navy. <laughs> so so he turns it right back on me, you know. Uh but wow. um but I, I have to say, you know, it takes, it takes a strong man period oh. to uh, be married to uh, another pilot. And um, 
he he just has always been like i said a, a renaissance man is the whole reason that i could keep my hand in flying uh, a reduced schedule once we had kids but he um he learned how to braid hair and everything it takes to raise a girl as well as a boy right <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah so um so yeah that's the that's the setting. Now, I will say that morning, whenever we met the flight attendants for the first time, I, I have a habit of, if I have at all, any time, I try to swing by and get coffee for the crew and show up. Um, really, even if they don't drink coffee, it lets them know, I thought of you before I got here. And uh, that way, whenever I, I arrive, I don't have to say, hey, come in for the captain's briefing. <laughs> I just say, I brought coffee and they come. And uh, in that in that time, having a little coffee and I try to get the the, the big points of, of our day covered, uh, weather and, and things like that, uh, protocol for different situations, but then ask a few questions and come to find out the all three of the ladies were ladies of faith. Uh, one had gotten a new Bible, was journaling, the other one, uh, was doing a, a study in Psalms and Proverbs. I, Darren and I had spoken about our seniors in high school. We both had seniors in high school and what we were going to get them and for their gift. And I was writing my son a journal with, uh, I was just writing him the book of Proverbs in a journal for him to take with him. And, uh, and so it's, it brought on a conversation. So as we headed out that day, um, even though we had basically maybe five, seven minutes uh, before the day started, we had just a little bit of a bond. And then we landed, we took off in Nashville, landed in New York, we had a little extra time to get back together. And then we headed to Dallas, Texas. Uh, you know, everything had been going smooth. We had no reason to anticipate it not going smooth. It was great weather. And, um, so that was kind of the launch of flight 1380. And then, so as, as, as I follow the story, um, you're, you're leaving LaGuardia and then you heard a boom. Yes. And so I, I don't know what you're able to share, but whatever, you know, yeah. whatever, are, what was that? What was that like? What happened in those moments? Um, you know, truthfully, everything I tell you in the next five minutes happened in an instant. Uh, Darren, Darren said that's how he explains it to his family and friends. He said, I try to just tell him, okay, just remember everything I'm going to say, it happened in an instant. And Darren, and was, so, your, Darren was your co-pilot that day. Darren's my first nice. officer that day. He's okay. Captain Darren now. Okay. But um, yeah, we, we heard the boom and thought that we'd been hit by another aircraft. I mean, we got slammed so hard. It was like what you would imagine a Mack truck T-boning you feels like. And we, we were, I mean, the aircraft lurched sideways, skidded, and went into a snap roll to the left and pitched over the nose. Darren and I both grabbed the controls and leveled the wings, at, caught it going past 40 degrees, and something you have never experienced in an airliner because we don't use 40 degrees. <laughs> but um, as we leveled it, we could see the engine instruments on number one flashing. So we knew number one had been hit. Whether how it had been hit, we didn't know. Again, we both thought we'd been hit by another aircraft because of the hard uh, jolt to it. But uh, that's, that all happened and in a moment in time suddenly we couldn't see anything because there was such a shuddering going on uh throughout the aircraft and a roar and then we we had a a plume of smoke pulled into the cockpit and and then a cloud of condensation and so when you can't hear anything it was a roar that smothered every other noise so there was no communicating except in hand motions but there was also such a shuddering we couldn't focus our eyes on anything and and then 
we realized that we had these stabbing pains in our ears is what we noticed first. And then we realized, well, we're not being able to breathe either. And those can be very isolating uh, factors when you put them all into one moment in time. And I remember having just this, this adrenaline rush, which I think everybody had at that moment. And mine uh, kind of just good news and bad news uh, a fork in the road. And the bad news being, I'm just not sure we're gonna hold on to all the pieces we need to get this to a runway. And of course you take that just one step further, which would mean this is the day I may meet my maker. And that, that speed train of thought just rushing for those cliffs of what if it stopped. And I, I could take a step back from that precipice and realize I won't be meeting a stranger. I meet with him every day. And I just honestly stepped back from that, looked at the good news side of the, the uh, fork there in the road and realized we're still flying, so we'll keep flying. And, you know, habits and uh, experience, I've been flying 30 some odd years by that time. And training, all of that, yes, it goes into handling a situation like that. But I can tell you the peace that I had that gave me the calm that I needed that was a gift, and I don't think that was of myself. It's, it shouldn't surprise me, God promises it. You know, that peace that goes beyond understanding, that calm beyond a reason. And um, because not only did we not know what had happened, but the ramifications of that, there was an unscripted combination of emergencies that kept unfolding as we got closer and closer to the ground. It started with that hard hit, lost an engine, um, the, the roar was from a window being damaged and blowing out, which caused the fatality there. It also, uh, caused all the oxygen to leave. And, and then the, the shuddering was from the explosion of the engine, which tore out pieces of the leading edge of the wing. It, it just sent debris everywhere. Um, there were big pieces that air traffic control said that they could see and they, they kept a radar lock on it to follow it to the ground. But the smaller pieces, I think, did even more damage to the tail, the underneath of the wing. It severed hydraulic lines, fuel lines. So uh, there was just some different things that, and, and really to pull it all together, um, whenever we, we got closer to the ground, they, they said, okay, um, <clears throat> you know, we're leveling off. We're, we're coming over the heart of Philadelphia at a pretty good clip and we needed to get down. But when we tried to level off, we were in for a rude awakening. There was no level off capability and maintaining control. We had to keep a certain amount of airflow over that rudder to be able to keep the nose of the aircraft straight in the air aircraft don't fly well sideways and that drag from the damaged engine and wing was pulling us to the left and so uh, we needed airspeed to be able to keep our nose straight and when we added power on the right that just made us go left more so we couldn't use the power we had anticipated and we we're much more on a glider path than we had originally thought so that was certainly something that created some some reworking of our problem there and and also not being able to turn the aircraft the last 90 degrees because we had a little power in and there was no response when we went to turn towards the runway and again uh, the habit of who do you turn to and I didn't realize I'd said it out loud but when we listen to the cockpit voice recorder, there's my voice in the middle of silence there. Air traffic control at the tower had said, it's behind you, you know, and told me right where to look for the runway. And there's silence inside our cockpit. And there's my voice in a question of, Heavenly Father? And the finish of that the sentence is, what am I missing? And, and you know, as prayer often does, just takes that metal cage off our mind so we can get out of that hamster wheel of thought that's not going anywhere. And I realized, okay, uh, asymmetrical power is my problem. Asymmetrical power is the answer. Uh, 
pulled it back. We, we lost airspeed, which we needed, but we made up for that by using altitude. So we went below glide slope, uh, but we still made the runway and uh, slower and lower than anticipated. But have to, before I land this plane, I have to tell you there were three amazing passengers that during the flight at high altitude got up and unbuckled, left their oxygen masks and their families uh, and went towards this open roaring window and, to help the passenger get back inside. And Andrew Needham, Tim McGinty, and Peggy Phillips, retired nurse, got up and did CPR to help. And um, I think it's such a testimony. All three of them were, were people of faith in the Lord and how life is sacred, whether you know them or not. Um, Jennifer knew the, didn't know anyone on that airplane and no one knew her, yet she was worth taking a risk to save. And um, so uh, when we landed, um, the ground crew, everyone uh, was, was amazing. And I, I always, uh, I will stop there to give you que time for questions, but I do have, have a few things to say about the heroes of that day. Please, please, I would love, if you want, please say it. If you'd like, okay. to, you'd like to say it now, yeah. Yeah, I, I have to say when I, when I finished what I needed to in the cockpit and got back to the cabin because I, I thought there would probably be some real aggravated, upset passengers and I wanted to help my flight attendants in whatever needed to be done and also reassure the passengers that help was on the way. And I was greeted with completely calm and attentive people that were treating each other, though they were strangers, they treated each other with the tenderness of a family. And I think that is because everyone felt the value of human life that day. And um, we were able to return 148 people to their lives and their loved ones. Um, we were not able to do that for Jennifer Reardon. And just like scripture tells us, um, the, the loss of one will never be eclipsed by the survival of 148. And so um, her loss was significant. And that evening, my husband, Dean, called me knowing uh, a little bit more because I talked to him earlier about how the landing was not uh, a given. Uh, we we had a number of struggles along the way that that um, we you know we we had to change our plans moment by moment to make it work and um, he gave me he gave me that scripture in Ecclesiastes that says uh, there is a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance and I think that was the day that I understood that can be all in one time, not season by season. And um, I, I, I've, I've always been amazed. I'm still amazed on a daily basis at how God speaks our hearts and, and knows um, ahead of us what, what is needed. Yes. Yeah. You, you said two things that just really trying not to lose it, you know, but you, you said something so beautiful. You know, you had that moment of, if I meet my maker today, well, I know him. So, okay. And, and I, that is truly the, the biggest problem I see around the world is, is people that don't know him. So they have no peace in right. being here or in being here. Well, and I, I think that is a huge reason that fear is so rampant right now, not just in our nation, I think around the world. And, uh, you know, I think there's a reason that the most repeated command in scripture, the most frequent advice is do not fear. Right. It's, it's over. It's the theme that God 
tells us, much like a father telling his child, do not fear. And then he gives us those logical legs to stand on that command and accept that advice. Uh, a perfect example is 2 Timothy 1.7, where he tells us, mm -hmm. I did not give you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and self-control. And power, I think, and fear are like light and darkness. They cannot coexist. Nope. Where there's the presence of one, there is not the other. And I always, it took me, I'm, I'm probably kind of slow. Other, uh, other people are going to think, oh, Tammy Joe, everybody knew that. But, you know, the, the next two words always kind of, um, I, I just kind of wondered, why did he pick love and self-control? And then it dawned on me, that's the bookends of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And so he's just giving us those bookends of this. Look at this. This is what I gave you to live life in. And life is good. It doesn't matter economically. It doesn't matter culturally. It doesn't matter where in the world you live. These things, of which there's no law against, are good. Right. And um, so I, I do think fear is one of Satan's greatest weapons. And unless we, we claim what God has given us as birthrights, as children of God, we'll succumb to it. Yeah. You know, it, it, and it's my, one of my favorite scriptures is the one that says, uh, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. And oh, you, yes. yeah, you mentioned, you know, fear is the opposite of faith. So if, if without faith, it's impossible to please God, you know, in fear, we're guaranteed that we will not be pleasing to God. And, you know, when I think about it, there's really no good godly reaction that comes from being driven by fear. And right. if you had allowed fear to take over on that day, you could not have even, uh, you couldn't have been who you were created to be in that moment. Right. I, for one thing, fear immobilizes us. It kind of unplugs us. If, if we're the electrical unit, you know, it just unplugs our source and, uh, and we're done. And uh, I'm, I'm not immune from fear. I mean, there have been times, not in airplanes, so to speak, but in other things in life that I, I get frozen at, like, what am I gonna do about this? Uh, and I realized, wow, that is, that, is not, that is not a good place to be. Don't want to dwell there. <laughs> right. And I, I see uh, Christina was asking a question. Thanks for chiming in there, Christina. Uh, oh, go, go ahead. It's a, yeah. It's a, no. Oh, wow. For one, I'm over here trying not to cry. This is I so, know, me too. I feel like I'm watching a movie in my mind. But, um, you know, obviously there was, had to have been an aspect of a lot of fear during this whole event. And I'm just curious, how did, you know, after walking away from this, you know, a few days later up to leading right. up to now, how has this event helped you confront fear now, living mm -hmm. now, like after that event? Like, what did you take right. away from that? You know, one of the things that I, I took away is you can get your back completely to the wall and still have such great options with the Lord. Woo! Um, so and uh, and so I it did make me realize we we're eternal creatures you know the the people that I fly with the people that you meet at the water fountain they're eternal and so uh, what we do in this life is important but it's not final mm -hmm. I I will say Cynthia I admire your voice and that you use it for the Lord. And so I, I hope and I pray that that is something that God will, you know, use whatever small swath of time I have to be a voice for him because it would be a crime to have this, this gift, this jewel, this fount of eternal life and not share it. Amen, Tam and Joe, and you know, a couple things. Uh, first of all, when you first came on, it's, it's really funny how the enemy will lie to us, right? To keep us, <laughs> he wants to silence our voice and steal our calling. 
because you know yeah that's a good way we, I, I i always say because he can't take our lives right only got well, he already tried that and he failed that with you. And you already know he can't take your life. So it's funny that he would use those little lies because when you first came on, my first thought was, oh my God, she's so beautiful. Yes, <laughs> you. I know. I got Katie a text, you know, and like, wow, she's so pretty. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, gosh, she's beautiful. And she, and she landed a plane and saved all those people that was, you know, crashing and she's a Navy fighter pilot. Like, oh my goodness, you know, and gosh, Tammy Joe, I just, I am just so, you know, grateful for the voice that God has given you and for the obvious plan and, and calling that, you know, we've seen a glimpse of it in your life. We've seen sort of probably your first Esther moment you know, for such a time as this, but obviously not your last because you're still here. So I guess in closing, what, why do you think God said, uh, 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 not today, it's not this daughter's appointment? So what, what, what do you think? You know, um, I will have to say my husband was the first one to voice it. I thought it after uh, a few months, um, and realized, you know, I, I'm not sure that flight 1380 was the only thing he had for me to do, you know, like, um, it wasn't something that, okay, that's done. Now I'm finished. And, um, I, I think God's got other things for me to do. I have a bucket list that he keeps, uh, putting things on and I, I love what he puts on there, but, um, uh, I think we live in a time that there's so many, um, so many lies that are out there for not just our children, but for us, for our age, women, men. I think there are so many um, untruths that are out there. And sometimes it takes somebody from, uh, you know, a lay person like myself that has, you know, walked in that field to, uh, earn the credibility to speak to that that group, and I don't I don't speak mainly to aviators though I that's my field, but I do think just kind of earning the right to speak to uh, some dynamic things in our lives that affect us, whether we are a stay at home mom, a doctor, a lawyer, a um, TV and an interview personality, such as Cynthia, uh, a pianist. Uh, you know, there's, I think, I, I think about how um, God used fishermen. Jesus called fishermen, you know, and how uh, he can use people from so many different walks. And this is a time that I think uh, really calls for some, 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 happy truth. You know, there's so much dark out there. There's so much despair. There's so much anger. And I can tell you, I think I have felt all that anger, despair, darkness. I felt it in my own heart. And if it weren't for Christ, it would still be that way. He, he absolutely has a higher ground, a higher plane for us to live on than what uh, so many of us are having to live in today. Amen. That is, <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. And I, 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 I often say to people, you know, if it weren't for Jesus, I guess I would be burning and blowing up buildings too, because we've just had a really horrible season here in our country. And around right. The world. Yeah. Right. And I, I think about how, um, I mean, I can look through my journals and see how angry and bitter I, I could have been and, and was happy to be. And, and then as I would read and then have my quiet time, God would, you know, open up my mind and put some salve on that because we do hurt each other and, uh, life isn't perfect. And, um, there are things that need to, need to be done differently, but it's, um, it's never through, through the methods of fear and anger, uh, that God, God brings it about. Yeah, right. It's true. Well, I, I could, 
I could sit here and talk with you for a lot longer, <laughs> but I need, oh. yeah, but you guys need to understand Tammy Jo has a flight that she's got to go <laughs> and fly with, you know? and that's the honest to God truth. And, and uh -oh. I just want to say thank you so much for Tammy Jo for making time and for being just a wonderful sister in Christ and a wonderful human being and a wonderful pilot. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And what a treat to get to uh, spend all the time with you. And Anne and Christina today, thank you. Uh, you have been a blessing to me. And I just uh, pray that God's blessing continues on your ministry. Thank you, thank you. And, and uh, for all of you who have been watching, don't forget to pick up a copy of Tammy Jill Schultz's book, uh, Nerves of Steel. Again, she is the captain of Southwest Flight 1380 that would have had a whole different day uh, had God not had a plan that he exercised through Tammy Jill Schultz. Um, I'm Cynthia Garrett. You've been a part of another session and uh, I love y'all and we'll see you soon.